Hey, hey, folks. Tuesday with Stories is brought to you by Feels CBD. CBD isn't about what you feel. It's about what you don't feel, like stress, anxiety, or pain. I can't sleep. I got anxiety. I'm a mess. I love CBD. It calms the brain. It just chills you out, but you don't get high, and it's great. It helps me snooze. I, I My brain goes a mile a minute at night. Now when I hit the pillow, I pop some uh, feels, and I'm off to La La Sleepland. Feels is a premium CBD that will help you feel your best while keeping your head clear. The thing to remember about CBD is finding your right dose is important, and everyone's dose is different. So Feels offers a free CBD hotline to help you find your perfect dose. The Feels customer service is dedicated to making you making sure you get the best use of your CBD. It's hassle-free, delivered directly to your door. Helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. There's no hangover or addiction. Just a few drops under the tongue, and you'll be you'll feel different in minutes. Join the Fields monthly membership and feel better today. You'll save money on every order, and you can pause, cancel anytime. How to do it, Fatty? That's right. Start feeling better with Fields. Become a member today by going to fields.com slash Tuesdays, and you'll get 40% off your first three months with free shipping. That's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash Tuesdays to become a member and get 40% off automatically taking off your first three months with free shipping. Fields.com slash Tuesdays. Tuesday's Story is also brought to you by Lucy Nicotine Gum. Look, we all know how hard it is to quit smoking. There's literally books about it. People have to go to a hypnotist. It's a nightmare. My dad used to smoke. He quit. He's never been happy since. It ain't easy. You got to do it. When you're craving a smoke, you just need a little something to satisfy the habit. Lucy was founded by Caltech scientists, former smokers who want to help other people quit. They set out to create a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. It took three years of research, Whoa. and they made Lucy a nicotine gum that actually tastes good. It comes in three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, and pomegranate. I like cinnamon. The answer comes back every time. Cinnamon. cinnamon. Don't like gum? Try the lozenges. Citrus, mint, or cherry ice. Four milligrams of nicotine in each. Subscribe monthly. And get deliveries so you'll always be ready. Hey, they are supporting this show, so go support them. Get 20% off all products, including gum or lozenges, at lucy.co with code TUESDAYS. That's 20% off lucy.co and use promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. Here's the legal mumbo-jumbo. Warning, this product product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is a chemical, but you already knew that. So get 20% off at lucy.co with code TUESDAYS. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. (laughs) Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe Liss. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. Nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, here we are, folks. We're doing it. (laughs) Swallowed a big June bug. We're here. It's uh, New York City. It's getting nippy out there. It's Groundhog Day. And uh, what? It's got to be 60, 55 degrees out there. 55. It's uh, what's known as an autumn chill. I love autumn in New York. Fall, bring it on. I'm sick of summer. I'm sick of spring. Fall on my ass. I love the fall. I mean, the fall, the autumn, the... Is there another one? That's it, right? Fall, autumn. Fall and autumn, yeah. That's about it. Uh, October, the... fest, sober October. I guess that's it. Fall and autumn. You got well, Halloween, you got Thanksgiving. Well, the other one. as a sports nut, I got baseball playoffs up my ass. I got college football on the tip of my dick. You got the hockey season just started, hoop uh, just started, whatever. Ah. But you got all day, I mean, all weekend, and I was up there with my family, and it's all we have is sports. If the sports Ah. were taken away, forget about it. I'd take a gun and just put it right in my mouth and shoot myself. Interesting. Even with mom. Well, mom, she's, you know, sweeping, cleaning, mopping, (laughs) dishes, whatever. She'll, She'll throw some shit in there, but... She's a good woman. When I drank... You drank. You went, oh, woo, have you tried this? Have you sniffed this? Have you stuck that up your ass? That's exciting. But mm-hmm. with the sports, you get, uh-oh, the, the cat's fucking with the camera. Don't knock it over, you piece of shit. Just sniffing. But 
the sports, you can throw on the game. Did you see that play? Who do you think is going right. to win? Uh, with the Bruins game, we'll put in a pot and go, who do you think is going to score? Everyone yeah. put in five bucks. You think Pastor Nike. You think your mother's asshole. So sports, October is the time to me. Interesting. Well, I think sport. I think you, you touched in on something there, Fatty, where sports is really – I mean, look, two a son and a dad. What what are we going to talk about? Uh, anal anal shrinkage, you know? Like, cat wants you to throw the the string. Oh, I thought that was the charger. I thought he wanted to. No, charge no. Phone. See that string? He he got that off a tampon. He he shook down a lady. Now you got to throw it. There we go. Fetch. You play fetch with the oh, cat. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't think now so. Now he's hunting. See, he's got it. He thinks oh. the spring is a little gay worm. So this is going to go on the whole this episode. This is going to go on for six weeks. This is the episode now? This is it. Uh-huh. Try to throw it on the table. See if it goes up on the table. Get it, Dickless. Up, bitch. There oh, we go. Wow. Watch out for the water. Watch the water. You come guys the Nazi. Oh, oh, what a douchebag. Oh, it's got no tact. But oh, it sucks. either way, the sports. Yes. You know, you think about the 40s, the 50s, the 30s. A, you got one channel or the radio, and B, what are you going to talk to your gruff, scary man dad about? He's working at the factory all day, he hits your mom, he's uh, he's at the mill, you know, he's slugging back beers. You need that game. It's all we got. I, I heard on the radio that uh, Belichick might be uh, blowing his son before the game. Oh, well, if he blows his son, they might be up by three and a half by halftime or whatever. Right, right. It gives you something to connect with. Yes. And I'll tell you, there's times where there's not a lot of sports going on, and you're just kind of like... And even with the sports, I'll be like, look at this play. Did you see that? And you still get a... And you're like, all right. Tough crowd with the pops. Boy, this is my fetish. Oh, yeah. Sniffing my toes a little bit. My wife won't do it. Lick that toe. Yeah. You ever suck a toe? Oh, I love sucking Uh, a toe. Are you kidding me? That's where you and I diff. But a toe is like a butthole. I gotta gotta do the washing. Sure. You can't just take off a sneaker. There's people that are into, like, dirty feet. That's disgusting. I mean, if you're out dancing and you take a shoe off, get the toe away from me. But if you're fresh out of the shower or in the tub together... And don't get me wrong, I'm not coming. Sure. But I'll stick it in my mouth a little bit, for sure. No, thank you. You got some whore at Woodstock uh, doing the, the Watutsi to, uh, you know, Buffalo Springfield. I don't want that hoof in my apartment, chalking up <laughs> sand everywhere. Get out of here. Well, again, I'm not like a guy who's like, oh, I, got, I just met her on a date. I took her to the movies. I hope I can suck some toe tonight. Mm. I'm just saying, you put a toe in my mouth, I'll suck on it for a couple days. I'm the same. Your toe, my aunt's toe, my wife's toe, I'll suck on it. But I was uh, back in my single wacky days. Watch, I got a couple of cunt hairs on there. Back in my wacky days, I was uh, putting my tongue in all kinds of orifices and crevices. And uh, I got got a virus. Which one? H. pylori. Oh, I remember the H. pylori. Yeah, those are tough days. H. pylori kill Martin. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And uh, those were tough. Tough times. But, you know, you pop one antibiotic and you're back. Let me tell you about this because I thought this was interesting. I did a big cornhole tournament fundraiser. For my uncle's fire department, the Holbrook Fire Department, Holbrook Mass, great group of guys. Usually we do, uh oh, the cat's, cat's grabbing it's, at it's our really wires. really wanting you to, to play fetch there, but hey. It's all in the wires. We're it's working like Christmas here. vacation. Yeah, <laughs> cool it there, Dickless. All he's, right. he's a playful uh, little rambunctious queef. What are you wearing? Your girlfriend's shoes? What's going on there? No good. A little white, no? White with well, the. Oh, I see a little symbol there. All right, like white. But if a lady wore them, it would look okay. I don't know. You sound like a Netflix exec. A little too white. But, no, I don't know. That's a Reebok. All right. What do you got on? You got on a period blood over here. <laughs> I got a nice, dirty running sneak. All right. New balance. Got some stank on it. Like a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that looks like, uh, I don't know. Too dainty for Ooh. you? <laughs> it's a little dainty. I might suck really? on your toe. Wow, I got the gum sole. I got a, I got an emblem on the side. Gum sole? Isn't that a detective? <laughs> That's a gum shoe. Mm. Similar. I like a cum shoe. You ever come on the shoe with a boot? Oh, yeah. On accident, I got to hit it on a Timberland at a construction <laughs> site. 
But yeah. What, what were you saying about your dad? Ah, uh, the Holbrook, Holbrook. Holbrook Fire Department. Yeah, yeah. Cornhole. A, a fundraiser. So usually we do the comedy show, but we couldn't do the comedy because of COVID and everybody died or whatever happened. So this year they did a cornhole tournament, which ah. is a hell of a way to raise funds. Great. I lo- no overhead. It's outside at a bar in the parking lot, and it, you have to put in, I think it's 100 bucks a team, so 50 bucks a head. Okay. You get a partner, you put in 100 bucks, all goes directly to the fire department. I like these charity it, or fundraisers directly to the group. Uh huh. Yeah, I love the group direct. Got to get direct. So Direct deposit. I get some comics to come down. The whole family goes over there. And it's 500 bucks if you win the tournament. Ooh, nothing to sneeze at. And so everybody in the family's going, I think we might win. I think Dad and Susan might win. I think Jerry and Amanda might win. I think Bob and Tom might win. And I go, let me just tell you right now, folks, nobody's winning this because there's a cash prize. So if there's a cash prize, there's going to be two ringers. And I go, there's going to be two fat douchebags that found out about this. Oh, All they do is play cornhole, right. and they go around town like fucking rounders. Yeah, it's like carnies. They come into town. They drive in. They make a weekend out of it. They look in the yellow pages. They find the nearest cornhole tournament, and they go win the thing. And I go, I'll bet all the money that two fat douchebags that are, that are fucking uh, ringers win this tournament. Everyone goes, oh, you're crazy. Shut up. Or you don't know what you're talking about. They're cornhole sharks. Exactly, and what happens? Two big fat guys, no smiles, no Nothing. laughs, They're no high business. five. They showed up to win their five hundred. Yep, no and nonsense. They throw everyone in the hole. Joyless? Don't you hate yeah. a joyless? <laughs> joyless. Well, they're playing cornhole professionally. There's not a lot of shit going on in their lives. Professionally, by the way, they're splitting five hundo, which isn't exactly. Uh, <laughs> ah. I mean, two hundred fifty bucks. You're not getting far in this economy with two fifty. In Whitman, Mass, I feel like you could buy a McMansion. Good point. What is a McMansion? I keep hearing McMansion. What happened to Mansion or not Mansion? Where did we get Mick? Is that an Irish guy? No, I think McDonald's is like cheap, shitty food. Ah. It's a cheap, shitty mansion. I believe. It's like a. It's like a. You know, you put it in the machine and just crank it out. Right. <laughs> Got it. It's fast <laughs> food of a mansion. Exactly. Thank Don't mansion you. It. Uh, <laughs> so. Oh boy! Oh man, we're on. We're on. Very this is, active cat. Oh, he's all over the place. What were you gonna say? He, he's he loves. Uh, we call this Pride Rock, and he's. I think he's bugged because uh, we got two feet, one lady shoe, one menopausal, and uh, and a Zoom mic, and I think he's a little little annoyed by it. It's four feet, but uh, damn it, Pride Rock. What is he gay? What do you mean Pride Rock? <laughs> well, like uh, the Lion King. You ever uh, seen it? I saw it, but a long time ago. I'll send you a clip. I remember the sex thing. Remember he falls and it turns into sex? Oh, yeah, when the Disney guys got all uh, horned up and started animating. Yeah, the way they, they, uh, they Aladdin, put your clothes on, dickless, or what was it? All good teenagers take off their clothes, but put your clothes on, dickless is better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, Frozen? that's in the Will Smith one. Um so anyways, as predicted, the two fat guy come, and they throw, and they never smile once. They're just tossing it in there, and you try to go, hey, what's up there, pal? I'm a comedian. They don't listen. They just throw it in. Yep. But so the thing about the dads, when you play cornhole, your, your teammate is on the other end, and your opponents are next to you. Mm. So if we were standing like this, you'd be my opponent with your partner down there. Oh, so you got to make small talk with the fat weirdo, and your, your buddies across the way. Exactly. It's a lot of small talk, and I had Mike Whitman as my teammate. Oh, I love the wit. We were the Porky Pines. Two words. Fun. And it's, it's weird he's named after the town. Yeah. I'm in a town. My best bud is uh, the same name as my town. That's like I bring you, and your name is Joe Orleans. <laughs> That hey, that's a good. That's a good porn name. Oh yeah, spicy. Um, Suck the head. Any jizz. So I'm sitting there making small talk, and one of our team, uh, my opponents, is like a young whippersnapper, mm. and he says, "Hey, how do you know uh, what brings you to the fire department gig?" And I go, "Well, my uncle's one of the firemen." And he goes, "Oh, which one?" I say, "Oh, Campbell over here. He's got the huge cock and the little feet." Yeah, that's true. Big Dale. Big Dale, huge cock on Dale. That's what I hear about Dale. That's a fire hose downtown. <laughs> it's, it's a thick, thick. <laughs> So I say I know him, but I mean I don't. I know all the guys. I've been I've been hanging out because my uncle graduated the fire academy the same week I did my first open mic. Wow, big name! So we kind of came out at the same time, and uh, so I go. I know all these guys for twenty years, and I point to this one guy over here, and I go, "That guy right there. That guy's a fucking oh." Because this kid goes, "I'm the new recruit." Oh, I'm he's the a fire new fireman. Department. He's the new S Watch fireman. The tea. I can't give you the T. Put the T here. Ah, that seems ah, you'll be precarious. Fine. All right. What's precarious mean? Strange, peculiar. 
No, that's that's different. That's a different. Precarious word. is like if something's precariously balanced, which means it could fall. Oh, maybe it's a little dangerous. Care must be in there. Mm. Right? Care Pre-care. is it a root? Rius. Mm. Interesting. Precautious. Maybe it's in that family. Uh oh, cat's gone. He just killed itself. Yeah, it's about the time. Fuck? Sits in here all day. I don't blame it. Well, anyways, the kid says, I'm the new recruit. And I go, oh, wow, you're new. I'm like, well, let me tell you about the guy, because I know all these guys. Oh, there This you guy's go. nuts. And I go, this guy over here, he's a fucking psychopath, complete maniac. We used to drink together. I could tell you some stories about this fucking nut right here. Yeah. And then this kid goes, ah, that's my dad. Oh, boy. And so I had to do the, well, maniac in a good way, obviously. Yeah. But I mean... <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to get into details. Luckily, I didn't, but we used to, I mean... What are we talking? Fucking animals? Uh, <laughs> running over kids? Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> I mean, well, I'm 22. He's probably 10 years older. He's on the fire department. Uh, you know, single guy. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. gay. We're young. We're sure. drinking. I mean, just use your imagination, folks. But All right. Well, we know where you got the herp. Well, all of a sudden, I'm telling this whippersnapper, I'm glad I didn't tell any stories out of school because... But it's weird, though. That's what made me think about this. We're talking about eating pussies. Isn't it weird to think your dad was running around eating I pussies? I know, I know. And my dad was a hunk in his day, too. So he really, I'm sure he was eating a caboose and licking nips and fucking boys. Why well, Wouldn't it be weird if you were playing cornhole with an old guy and he pointed to your dad and was like, this guy's a straight fucking psycho right here. I think I would love, my dad's got a briefcase and a, and a buttoned up green shirt with, a, with bad pants and, and brown shoes. I, I think I'd like that. <laughs> Well, you might want to get some of his shoes, but the but the kid, I'm sure no. I didn't feel like I gave anything away because he's yeah. on the fire department with right, his dad, so they must all be telling stories. But I was just thinking, I can't imagine a situation where a guy with a big bushy mustache says, "Oh, this guy," and points to old Steve List and yeah. says, "This guy's a, a pure psycho maniac." No, same with my dad. It would never happen. They go, "Hey, you know, your dad was uh, the best Cub Scout or whatever," you know, and it would be. He he's got to know though because he's on the fire team. Some other guy probably pulled. Ah, uh, your father was a fucking retard out there. He was fucking donkeys. We took him to the donkey show. We did down to Mexico, and you know he, he plowed a pig. <laughs> the fire team. <laughs> um, but anyways, that was great. I don't want to get too into the cornhole, but we had a great time because I got more cornhole, but I don't want to... If I talk for too long, these people, they send me death threats. Well, who is the fat guys? Do we, do we follow them? Can we give them a goog? Are they a couple of, uh, you know, huskers? Well, so that's the other thing. So the Rickers. fat guys, they win. They get the 200 bucks, the assholes. But here's the best part. So... You have the tournament. It's fun. We did well, Whitman and I. We won three games. He was... Jesus. What this cat's fuck? dying for you to give it a toss. Get, get on there. it. You can't point. It's like Louie's joke. Yeah. Oh, right in my penis. Yeah, yeah. He's assaulting. There you go. All right. I'm going to throw it really far away. Yeah, out the window. Poor for four. Yeah. All Elgato. right. Keep going. Elgato. Easy. Stringy. Boogly. I was wearing clogs. This cat, you wouldn't last a minute in the wild. I'm, I'm basically giving it to you. Why'd you throw it that way? Look, he'll, keep, he'll stay on the chair for a minute. We've got to throw it in the closet and shut it. Well, he's going to come out eventually. So the two fat guys win. They're fine. But so here's the fun thing is they go, they we're raising the funds for the fire department, yada, yada, and this music playing. Everyone's eating wings. It's a good time. But then they set up. Now, if you're ever doing a fundraiser, I'm going to look right in the camera for this. This is how you raise funds, all right? All right. If you ever have your, your, your daughter, her brain cells are all wacky or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, this thing's killing this me. This is out of, out of get, control. Go. Maybe I'll just get rid of the string. The string or the cat, something. Yeah. Because the people listening to auto, they're going to be like, what the fuck's going on here? The cat is, keeps bringing a tampon string up to Joe. Joe keeps throwing it, and the cat brings it back. It, it's got, I'm telling you, it's got the mind of a dog. I think he's a trans. Yeah, you got a little trans cat dog. Trans it's down cat. there, you dummy. He, he thinks he put it on the couch, but it's down nah, there. Nah, he wants you to pick it up. He thinks he did his part. He showed up with it. You got to get on the YouTube, folks, if you really want to have, yeah, have a blast. Yeah, get on the YouTube. I mean, this is, we were like Jack Hanna over here. <laughs> All right. Ah! Putting it back here. How do you like that, eh? It'll is, climb up there. Is this child abuse? Oh, no. Well, it'll, 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 it'll uh, oh, occupy geez. him for now about I feel an terrible. hour and a half. I finally am oh, with the cat for the first time. Uh, you got to figure it out there, Sherlock. Suck my ass and don't touch my water. All right, we're losing all the audio listeners. All we got to right. come back. Audio. That's enough with the cat already. Get the string. Oh, oh the string thing's going to bum me out. I'm going to put him down. Uh, but I'm listening. 
Mark's holding the cat if you're listening at home. Yeah. I'm going to twist his little neck. So here's how you raise funds for your sick kids. Yes. They set up the long toss. So the cornhole board, they put the cornhole board 50 feet away yep. and draw a little line. Whoever can make it in the hole, it costs five bucks for a throw. You can throw two at a, two turns in a row. Uh-huh. So Ten bucks, two turns. Okay. And if you get it in, you get half the pot. Now the ego kicks in. The ego, the fun, the wacky. Everyone goes, I think I can do that. It doesn't look so hard. Yep. I'm telling you, this was like a back alley in Harlem in Ooh-wee. the 30s. Everybody's going, oh, can you get it? Give it to old Jimbo. You got to give it to Steve. Steve Lynn, he'll throw it in. Get Marty over here. Marty can throw a bag. Yeah. No, no, my wife, she throws underhand. You got to factor in the wind. You're not factoring in the rain. <laughs> it went crazy. 800 bucks. Whoa. And nobody ever won it. What? People were missing it. A couple people hit the rim. One guy skidded over it. I put in 50 bucks myself. I kept going back up there. And they go, a list is getting another try. Everyone started rooting for each other. I mean, money was flying everywhere. People were sponsoring other people. A young kid threw it, and it landed on the rim. And some guy goes, hey, re-up. He handed him a 20. He doesn't even know him. He just handed 20 bucks to his kid. He made the kid suck his dick. It was pretty wild. Can I get the rules one more time? You throw it in a kid's mouth. What is it? So the the board is 50 feet away. Okay. And you got to be behind the line. You get a toss. Five bucks gets you one toss. Okay. If you get it in, you get half the pot. And, of course, the, the other half goes to the fire department. Oh. But nobody hits it, so it keeps building and building and building. Wow, that's genius. And it went for an hour. It took over the whole thing to the point they had to go, put that down. The finals are happening of the tournament. <laughs> and we had to go watch the fat assholes win all the money. But, I mean, this was why. I mean, people were screaming, jumping, jiving. we got to make that national. We could cure uh, hepatitis. I'm telling you what, because here's the thing about it. These guys, the ringers. Yes. People, I mean, I'm very good at cornhole. I'm above average, All right. I would say, because Whitman, I mean, he was brutal. But we won three matches. I carry the team. He came on strong at the end. All right. You ever have the thing with the uh, the, the cornhole where you got your own bag and you hit it, they both go in? Oh, that happens Woo! a lot. I mean, there was some drama. Hey. High drama. That's big. But... Uh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, but these ringers, so they can throw it in every time. Mm. They just toss it in on the hole. It never misses the board. But if you move it back 20, 30 feet, they don't know what they're doing. It's a different right. sport, different game. So nobody could do it. And we were all screaming. And there was like a, I don't know what you say anymore, like a special needs guy. And everyone kept giving him money. He took about 40 try, And everyone was like, come on, buddy. you got." And we wanted him to hit it so bad, of course. Yeah. But I think uh, the new term is downsy. I think that's completely <laughs> correct. But, um, I'm talking. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It was a huge hit. This thing is wants that string so bad. I know. Well, he's got to learn. You got to figure it out there, Chachi. I like to get the gut. Oh yeah. All right. But anyways, let me uh, shove this mic up my ass because I'm going to get death threats from about uh, seven people that hate me. Well, I uh, I got a saga here. Oh, I love a saga. All right, any uh, saga saga cereal? Here we go. Now this is a doozy. Now we last talked when I was in Nashville. Mm-hmm. How you doing, Kat? And I didn't realize I had a Sunday show, hmm. so I suck. Of course, you know I need an assistant. I can't make a schedule. So now I'm here on a Sunday. I'm in Nashville. I'm in Rhode Island on Monday, Hmm. which I thought I'd fly back Sunday. You have a night in New York. You make love to the lady. You fuck the cat. And then I would drive up on uh, Monday to to Rhode Island. Three-hour drive, three and a half. No dice. Now I have to change my flight to fly into New York earlier, jump right in a guy's car, and hightail it up to Rhode Island. Oof. Brutal. Brutal. On paper, you're like, ah, hey, you land in New York, you jump on a guy, but you just you got your suitcase. You want to go home. You're hungover. You're tearied up. You're crunchy in the socks. Brutal. Brutal. So I land. I drop my shit off. She goes, hey, you're home, and I go, zip it, cunt, and I walk right out the door and go all the way up to Astoria, jump in Raj's car. You know Raj? Sivaraman? No, Balani. No, I don't know Raj Indian. Balani. Different Indian, same color. No. And uh, so we go up to Queens, we jump in his car, and we just start <whistles> driving straight to Rhode Island. Now you got to cut through Connecticut, and we all know Connecticut on a weekday in this 
Time of year is a nightmare. I did it today. I drove from Massachusetts this morning, left really? at 7.30 a.m. It's just a, a kick right in the sack. You can't get around it. it. It's like COVID. It's everywhere, and it's that Sandy Hook. Look, we get it. The kids died. Get over it. Keep the cars moving. So we get caught. Here we go. Blah, 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 but we're making decent time. We're like, okay, the show's at 7.00. We'll get there at 5.30. We'll have Oof. time to kick back. Or Oof. we'll get there at 6. You know, Oof. you have a meal. Doug Key's there. I like Doug. Rogue Island Comedy Fest. Check it out every year in Rhode Island, Newport. We're driving along, talking shit, comedians, bullshitting, farting. Boom! Tire blows. Oh, God. I know. So you go, well, it happened. Let me get out and change it. He's like, I don't know how to change it. I'm like, I got it. I finally get to put pull my uh, skirt off and put my overalls on because I know how to change a tire. Nobody knows how to change a tire. Yeah, that's strange. Strange. Some people can't, we know can't even drive. Yeah, or pump gas. You ever meet those people? No, I've never seen that. Oh, my God. There's people that are like, I don't know how to pump gas. i got to find a full station. I'm like, what are you insane? Wow. Jesus Christ. It's like like, like Zsa Zsa Gabor over here. Can you turn on the windshield wiper? What else can't you do? Uh, uh, Yeah, exactly. Who puts your belt on? (laughs) So uh, we get out of the car, and he's got one of these Jeep. I think it's called a Jeep Legacy or Pioneer. It's a a Jeep of some kind, but it ain't a Wrangler or a Cherokee. Jeep trick. Yeah, so um, I go, uh, all right, let me pop the trunk. No spare. Ah, well, that's that makes it hard to change the tire. Can't spare a square. But they go, it's almost like a little riddle. They go, hey, you got no spare in this car, but we supplied you with a weird thing that <laughs> pumps into your car and it pumps sealant Seal into it. the car. So it fixes the wheel? Yeah, you literally, it has a hose, and you go, you twist it, you, you got oh, it. I got the string! Wow. I'm almost proud of you, even though you're super annoying. That's impressive. That was impressive. Good for you. He's talking to Blue Streak now, Jack. Yeah, string theory. So, this has got a tube, and it pumps into your tire, and you put it on sealant, and it pumps in sealant. And then, it's supposed to patch the hole from the inside. Then you twist the, the but, knob, and it puts air in. Wow, that's insane. Insane. And, you know, on paper, you're like, hey, that's pretty pretty clever here. Who did this? Uh, Steve Jobs, Stephen Hawking, Neil deGrasse Tye. So we were down on our knees. We're, we're doing, oh, the seal, put the seal on it. Okay, it's all electric. It's up in the, uh, the cigarette lighter thing. And then we go, okay, I think that's enough seal, and put air in. So we put the air in. It's not. It's not moving. Hmm. It's not going up and down. So I call Doug and I go, "Hey, no dice. Uh, the car's flat. You got to come over, like my ex." And Doug goes, "All right." He comes, picks us up. It's thirty minutes out. Then we drive there, do the shows. Two shows. Shows are great. A lot of gays. It's in a hotel. We have some beers. We have some pizza. Great time. So the whole time we're doing the. There's like a bunch of comics there, and all the comics are getting hammered. Going, we're staying. We got a hotel room. We're uh, we're nobodies. We're going to hang out here. We're going to drink and try to get laid and whatever. And I'm like, I want to get back. I want to get back. Sure, we'll get back at 3 in the morning, but I want to get back. Sure. So Raj goes, yeah, I'd like to get back too. And Doug goes, you sure? I got you the suite. Whoa. And it's one of these Newport nautical theme hotels. They're really cool and pretty. You know, there's a big fish on the wall and like there are all the submarine holes, you know, the port holes oh, for yeah. windows. It's fun. So I'm like, wow, this is a nice room. I go up and take a shit in the room. It's a beautiful room. It's huge. But I was like, nah, let's let's hightail it out of here. And Raj goes, what about the car tire? I go, oh, yeah. We go to Walmart. We buy a plug. Uh, a plug? Yeah, you plug the hole. Oh. The this sealant plug. didn't work. Sick. No, I never heard of a plug. Oh, you plug a tire. And you got a hole in there. You go, and you plug, put a plug in and then pull it out, and it stays. Ah, like it's, a butt plug. Yeah, it's a butt plug. It's pretty reliable. And uh, the, the guy, the Walmart guy, the tire guy was like, oh, yeah, this will get you. You can drive 75 miles an hour for like a week on this thing. We're like, great. Nice. So we get the plug. That takes us a half hour. We figure out how to plug it. You know, we got the car up on the whatever. We plug it. And we go, great. And now by this time, this we're at a gas station. The whole thing took forever. Cops show up because we're out in the middle of nowhere oh at a gas station plugging a tire. And it's in we, it's a couple of guys and an Indian dude. So uh, the cop's like, who's this? What, what do you call this kind? We're like, he's Indian. He goes, woo, woo, or dot. And we go, it's a dot. And he goes, all right, great. And we get back in the car, and it's one of those things where we're like, hey, 
Hey, going pretty good. I think we're good. <laughs> you know, it's one in the morning. We're going to make it by four. We're going to make it. All yeah. right. So we drive for about an hour. We forget about it. We stop worrying about it. Boom! The plug blows. Oh, a blown plug. <laughs> blown plug. Blow me. Blow me down. Yeah, hair plug. <laughs> yeah. So um, now we're like, shit. So we called Doug, and he goes, hey, I'm knee-deep in gash over here. I got a sailor hat on and a, and a strap on in my ass. I can't come get you. Now, how far have you gotten that you're still calling Doug? It couldn't be too far. We got about an hour and change. Oh, so we're boy. In, we're, in the, we're in the sticks now. I feel like you're abusing Doug. Well, we just had to say, hey, and he, we, just wanted, we just wanted to vent. What about AAA? He doesn't have AAA? He doesn't have AAA, and they said even if you do, they would just tow it. Uh, and then they'd have to bring you to a hotel or bring you to New York. We're like, we don't want to sit with a tow truck. Or how's that going to work? So we're like, fuck, what do we do here? What about a 24-hour Walmart? Nothing. We tried it. Uh, and we even rode a few miles on the rim. Like going, We went to a gas oh. station. We put air in it, filled it up, and then it just <whistles> went yeah. down like an old queef. So we go, God, we're in the middle of nowhere. It's 2 in the morning. So we go, I guess we got to get a motel. So we went from having a suite for oh, free my God. to now getting a motel with this honky and this Indian guy. You almost want to take a lift back to the suite. I looked into the lift. It was up like 280 bucks or something because there's no, no drivers available. I looked in everything. Isn't he a driver? Nah, he's just Indian. <laughs> okay. So uh, now we look up motels. Hmm. So I'm sitting on the side of the road. The car's jizzing raj is pissed and the cops pulled back up this is a new town we're in now the cops pulled up. old new town that's where uh oh, yeah. city hook well this was old saybrook oh that's where uh don't tell me don't t- Catherine hepburn live is that right yeah it's one of like the richest town very nice really? town oh yeah well you don't say brook the cops pull up brook shields and they go, uh, what the hell are you kids doing with the Indian? And we go, oh, yeah, yeah, flat tire. We plugged it, butt plug, uh, hair plug. It didn't go. And they go, well, you can't just stand around here. And we go, yeah, well, where do we go? And he goes, well, you can stay at the inn. And we go, how far is that? He goes, about a mile. And we go, should we walk? And he goes, all right, get in. Oh, fun! We got the back of the car. All I, right. I filmed the whole thing. I'll put it on the Patreon. Oh, I go, where are the horse that. at? The cop's like, they're, they're around here. Oh, I've had a few tonight. You know, he was great. <laughs> oh, that's great. They're protecting. Or yes, serving. And they're not serving. Protecting. They're serving. Yeah. And I, I guess I, they're protecting. A little protect. And yeah, you're going to get hit by a car. Now you can't. Right. And I, I made Joe. Like, it's very uncomfortable back here. He's like, you got that right. We did that on purpose. I'm like, I know. I, I know the on purpose. <laughs> yeah. They all give you the on purpose thing. So good times. And uh, you, you, you really feel bad for the uh, the black folk. Because I'm like, this is great. We're having fun. What is that? A 12 gauge? I know. I love a cop. They're a blast. Yeah, it was great. Drank and, with some of them, too. It's a real hoot. Yeah. So he drives us to the motel. And it's like out of a John Hughes movie. Like, all right, you take that bed. I'll take this bed. It's a shit box. You know, there's fleas everywhere. There's stains on the wall. There's jizz in my ass. And uh, How about those bears? Yeah, exactly. And he's uh, those aren't pillows. So uh, he's in his bed. We're both in our, you know, that thing where you got to get down to your undies and, and T-shirt. He's covered in hair. And I'm like, all right, well. Guess we could turn in. Now the lights are out. You can feel each other in the room. We don't know each other that well. He's a nice guy, but the whole thing is like, how did we get here? Oh, this is brutal. I, I, just, I, I know a, a female comic as a friend just had to share a room with a male comic, and I'm like, it's not. You're not going to get raped or anything, but it is that weird thing of like, can I turn out the light now? <laughs> it's, <just> like, <laughs> it's so weird. Once you're over the age of like. Eleven. It's so weird sharing a room with a person. You brush wild. your teeth. I'll brush my teeth when you're done. Yeah, I, I got to see your feet. I don't want to yes. see a guy's feet. Exactly. And like, I have weird routine. I did a plank. You know, the whole thing was off off kilter. And just, you get to know. He's like, "Do you mind if I call my girl?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Honey, I love you. If I never see you again, I'm like, oh god, I'm under the covers. I'm jerking off. You know, the whole thing was cuckoo. Did he have beads? Sometimes they have beads. And no beads. Oh, thank that's God. Good. Thank God. I hate the beads. I had anal beads, but uh, I did those when the lights went out. But yeah, it was wild. And, uh, you know, he's a great guy. And of course, you get no <laughs> sleep. You're tossing and turning. He's saying uh, Allah in the middle of the night. I'm snoring. He's farting. Uh, the old man is snoring. Whatever, you know. And he goes, well, here's what I'm going to do I'm going to wake up at 8 because we did a lot of Googling. All right, easy, cat. Did a lot of Googling. 
Uh oh, that'll keep him going for a minute. <laughs> We get, did a lot of Googling, and he's like, the tire shop opens at 8, so I'm going to call him immediately when we wake up, and we'll get the ti- the car over there, and then we'll get a ride back or whatever. Okay. So I go, okay, great. So he calls the tire shop. No one has this tire. Jeep fucked everybody on give, not giving a spare. That sealant horse shit didn't work. Nobody's got this tire. They're like, oh, they don't make that. He's like, let me call a different tire shop. Oh, yeah, have you tried this one? Yeah, I tried that one. Oh, yeah, those tires are out of commission, COVID, did did it did These guys are always prickly, too. Oh, very prickly. And uh, turns out one guy's like, we have that in our warehouse, but the warehouse is about two hours away, so we'll have to go there and then drive back. So probably about 4 p.m. we'll be able to get you back. Oh. And we're like, 4 p.m.? I was in Nashville 10 seconds ago, then I came straight to Rhode Island, and now I'm stuck in Rhode Island in Old Saybrook. All I can do is hear the lady going, I told you not to do these gigs. Just say no. Why are you going Mm -hmm. to Rhode Island? You just got off a flight, you psycho. So then I go, aha. Those drunk guys at the the show, the uh, the party, they're they're partying. I bet they're not even up yet. The guys from the show who stayed in the hotel. Oh, I see. For free. So I go, beep, beep. Hello? Hey, guys, it's me, Mark Norman, headliner. Uh, what are you guys doing? And they're like, ah, we're going to head back soon. You, you in New York yet? No, nah, actually, we had a tire pop. And they're like, oh, shit, where are you? Well, we're in Old Saybrook. Oh, okay, well, what do you need? Could, could you swing through here and pick us up? They pick us up. Pick us up. Taking you where, though? Back to Manhattan. What? Well, they live in New York. Oh, they live in New York. These are all New York comics. Who, I see. I see. I got a little confused. They, got to, they went and partied. They got a free room. They're going to take advantage. I got gotcha. you. So, so they're on their way to New York anyways. They're on their way to New York anyways. So they scoop the niblets. They scoop the niblets. So they go, well, we're, we're like just getting up. I'm going to go back to bed for a minute. He's got a shit blood. So we go, all right, you, you know, take your time. You know, you're extra nice when someone's helping you. Well, whatever you got to do, I'll give you gas money. So me and Raj uh, head over to uh, the little mom and pop diner. We have a nice uh, oh, omelet. Nice. Come back. We get the car to the shop, and uh, Raj goes, "I'm going to stay with the car." And I go, "You're a good man. <laughs> I'll see you later." And I jump in the car with these queefs, and we hightail it back to the Big Apple. Oh, that's beautiful. All's well that ends well. I mean, is he all right? Is his car okay? I kept, I, out of guilt, I kept checking in on him. Like, how is it? He's like, they're a little prickly. They're giving me shit. I'm Indian. And the beads. And then, uh, but he finally got home. Oh, good. Thank God. That away, Raj. Raj. And this is a We're neighbors. Yeah, good guy. I wonder if I know Raj. I'm sure you met him. He's got a studio out there he's offering us to have, but uh, it's in Astoria. Yeah, that's where I live. But, uh, Beautiful studio. All right. Well, you know, maybe I'll uh, hit him up. But, uh, wow, that is quite a tale. Quite a tale. Quite a tale. So I got home, and then it's one of those things where, like, now it's two or one. So you're like, ah, I got no sleep. The Indian guy, now I'm with these guys. And you're just wiped from, like, all the planning and figuring things out. And then the driving back. So, you, you know, the whole time I'm like, a punch buggy, uh, what are you doing for Christmas? <laughs> I'm trying oh, to be God, nice, yeah. you know? And they're great guys. Oh Uh-oh. boy, someone's here. I think that's Raj. Oh jeez, I don't know who that do you could be. The door. What do I you do? It's, I bet it's FedEx. Uh oh, you Federal got that? I don't know who that could be. Federal Express. Oh, oh, we oh, got food. Nice. Oh, nice. All right, all right. From when Elaine did that, I always thought that was kind of sexy when she was like Federal Express. Oh yeah, it was kind of hot. That was fun. There's something hot about a woman with a dude voice and a lady joking is fun. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what it is. You don't see women joking enough. No. Especially uh, Chelsea Handler. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Green Chef. Green Chef is America's number one meal kit for eating well. They're the best meal kit, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, pescatarian, or you just want to eat more balanced meals. I'll tell you, they sent a box of this stuff to our place. Mm-hmm. Me and the lady made a night out of it. We literally made a meal out of it. We had the we we cooked it up. We put music on. We put a candle going. We put on the Saints of Newark and ate it up, and it was delicious and spicy and flavorful. Loved it. We made this uh, Cajun pork tenderloin. You can't go wrong. Penne pasta. It was easy to follow the recipe. Super doable. I'm an idiot, and we still made it work. Fun. 
tastes good, feels good. Green Chef's expert chefs curate every recipe with over 30 meal choices every week and the flexibility to switch plans. You'll never have to sacrifice taste for nutrition. You can enjoy restaurant-quality dishes in the comfort of your own home. Recipes include pre-made and pre-measured sauces, dressings, spices, so you can get more chef-curated flavor in less time. Green Chef's expert chefs design flavorful recipes for your lifestyle that go way beyond ordinary sub- substitutions. All the ingredients are hand-picked and delivered right to your door, contact-free. Let Green Chef do the meal planning, grocery shopping, and most of the prep for you week after week. Go to greenchef.com slash Tuesdays125 and use code Tuesdays125 to get $125 off, including free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash Tuesdays125 and use code Tuesdays125 for $125 off, including free shipping. Green Chef, the number one (laughs) meal kit for eating well. Here, here. Tuesday's story is also brought to you by ExpressVPN. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like checking your baggage at the airport without a lock. You think your stuff is kept private? Well, you're never going to know who's going to go through your panties. Look, we all look up weird shit. We all Google kooky stuff. We all buy naughty things. Without ExpressVPN, it's like going online without a condom. It's the internet service that provides uh, things you can see every single website you visit. They can legally sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who then use your data to target you. That is terrifying. They know what you're thinking. Look at Gruden. Whatever happened to that guy? ExpressVPN lets you browse more anonymously. ISPs cannot see your online activity, and your data is also encrypted for maximum protection. It's also easy to use and works on all devices, phones, laptops, even routers. So everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can be protected. You got to do it. That all made sense to me. Secure your online activity by visiting expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays today. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash Tuesdays. And you can get an extra three months free expressvpn.com slash Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Here, here. Good Lord. Tuesdays with Stories would like to welcome Public Rec. There they are. I haven't taken them off, these pants. They're the best. I mean, what better ad promo do you need than the fact that he's wearing them with his balls are inside of them right now? Who knew you could look sharp in a pair of sweats, Public Rec? That's who. Look at that. They look good. They feel good. They stretch. They bend. They grip i'm not kidding i mean they sent us one pair i bought three additional pair (laughs) i have not put on a pair of jeans since this company came into my life i'm wearing jeans now i regret it i hate it i can't even move they're they're so uncomfortable that's why i love public rec athletic wear meets leisure they're the best they look great they feel great they smell great you can wear them anywhere happy hour work the gym and it's made for all sizes get the best selling all day every day pant Available in 40 different sizes, so it will fit all kinds of guys. The design is incredible. Even the pockets have zippers. These are made for relaxing. Plus, Public Rec makes shorts, tees, jackets, and even golf gear for men and the ladies. Look sharp while being comfy. I I fucking love these pants. I love this company. Public Rec rarely discounts, but right now they have an exclusive offer just for you gays. Go to publicrec.com and use code TUESDAYS to get 10% off. That's Public Rec. R-E-C dot com and use our promo code Tuesdays for 10% off. Do it. Back to the show. Wait, what was I going to say? It was Raj, something about the, the show. Raj. Oh, well, yeah. I just had that same feeling because I landed in, flew, was in Palm Springs, mm. flew home, landed at like 12.30 a.m., drove, got a cab to Astoria, got in at 1 a.m., yeah. watched TV because you can't just go straight into bed. No, no bed straight. You got to watch TV for an hour. Went to bed, woke up at 9 a.m., got right in the car and drove to Whitman oh, for this cornhole business. Yeah. But it's the same thing. I haven't, and then I drove, woke up at 7.30 this morning to drive back. So it's like I haven't been home, home yes. in like 10 days. Home I went straight from one trip to the other. And one trip was a Palm Springs desert tennis hiking vacation. Right. And the other one was with 48 people raising funds for a goddamn fire department with two fat ringers. So it's like I've had two completely different situations. And I wish we podcasted post-Palm Springs 
Because I'd be, I'm on top of the world, I did this right. and that, and now I'm in this, this family hangover. It's like a hangover with it the family. It is. The family, they take it out of you. I just saw my family, and they, they, uh, they have a way of making you feel stupid again. Well, they, I read some psychology bullshit that was like, your family always sees you as you were when a kid. They treat uh, you in that way. Yes. So it doesn't matter how much fucking... Uh, Credits and accomplishments. Whatever you've done, however anal. much money you make, you're still just that piece of shit that's afraid to go on Space Mountain. Yeah, I'm the bedwetting, braces, curly-haired nerd. Same. That, like, they still, to this day, they're like, remember you chickened out in Space Mountain? Ooh, I was like, I was nine. How about I've the go cart? I was on a helicopter <laughs> in Baghdad. Yeah! In a war zone. I'm wearing a helmet and a flak jacket, and they're fuck. I'm in Saddam Hussein's palace. Literally. How do you like that, Mom? I'm taking a shit in uh, ISIS's uh, toilet. I was a little afraid of the roller coaster when I was nine. Give I'm, me a I'm, break. I'm on TV over here. I didn't have pubes. Now I got too many. Blow me. Anyways. Yeah. So it's a whole thing, but I got to tell you a little bit about this Palm Springs yes, trip. Yes. It's a good movie. What a tri- I enjoyed the hell out of that film, but oh, yeah. uh, what a good. great time great trip and and sarah's been busting my queefs a little bit because she's like we go on too many trips i'm trying to get work done i'm trying to go too momentum. Many trip. wow i got the opposite in this bedroom over here <laughs> yeah well we should flip because let's wife swap i got uh i'm getting this thing because I, I always want to go places i'm like let's live we got some money we got uh, i always say it to you all the time what's the point of doing comedy we're trying to beat the system here you're right you're right you why am i gonna it. work i don't want to work no, you got the right attitude. We're all a bunch of workaholics. We can't sit with ourselves. Meanwhile, you go to a U.S. Open and a Yankee game in the same fucking day, and then you go over to Splash Mountain. It was the Mets, and uh, there's no splash. It's a desert, but close enough. But, hey, I mean, we could probably compare bank accounts. It wouldn't be pretty. But nah. still, I'm, I'm having a nice time out there. But we went to Palm Springs. I go, it's just going to be two days. So I made it quick, fast, because I'm trying to you're trying Two to balance. days for cross country? Well, three and a half days, but two full days. Okay. So we travel. We wake up at 4 a.m., go out to JFK. You fly to Salt Lake City, lay over, then fly to Palm Springs, rent the car. So then you get there. You, get, you leave at 6 a.m. East Coast. Yeah. By the time you get there, it's 1 p.m. So you have a full okay. day and night. That's something. Then two full days of no travel. Those are tennis days. And then the next morning, you have some time before you fly out. Got it. So we got day session one day for the Indian Wells Tennis Tournament, night session the next night. And I got to tell you, I want to be rich and just go to every day of a tennis tournament because you get into it. You, get, you yes. spend the whole day there. And that's like a smaller tournament. So the players play two days in a row. And there was nobody there. Because usually the tournament's in March, but they moved it to October because of the, the fucking COVID, COVID shit, and all the big stars aren't playing. Djokovic's not there, Nadal, Federer, Serena Williams. Uh, Where are they? I think they're all schedule-wise. The, the older guys now, they just save it for the big Grand Slam. Oh, so this is like a, a shitty fest that doesn't matter, where you got to save it up for the, the, the big Montreal or the Super Bowl. Well, when you get old now, yes. now they're like that. So any jizz, there's like nobody at this fucking thing. So we're sitting with our feet up, and I'm yelling. I was killing with the old ladies around. Oh yeah, I had some big lines. Love it. Let's hear it. Now let me hear you. Let me hear what you think of this because this really kind of peeved me. Peeve in my ass. So there's three British ladies. We're like the only ones in this section. Then there's three British ladies. Oh, bad teeth. And uh, eh, it's, sometimes it's hard. You know, you can't control how you, what kind of teeth you get. <laughs> but. Um, so they're sitting up I there, and uh, me too. It didn't take. <laughs> oh, boy. But, um, On so, your legs. All right, sorry. I'm yelling. We're all cheering for Andy Murray. He's a British, you know. He's coming back, the whole thing. Limey. So I'm going, come on, Andy. We're all cheering for him. He's getting beat. And I go, come on, Andy. We all like you better. And that gets a big oh, laugh because it's fun. like, you know, it's a nice sport, whatever. And, and clean. They, and these three old ladies, they laugh, and they go, oh, funny, funny, whatever. And uh, something, something. I, I'm getting some laughs. They keep looking back. And then every break, they play the music, and I'm dancing like a goof. I'm doing oh, disco yeah. dancing. Everybody loves it, the whole thing. I'm, I'm, I'm a hit in the section. I love it. Love a hit with the old broads. So then, tell me what you think of this. Mm. So it's in the second set, and Manny Murray's he's going to lose. And I go, come on, Andy, come back. We don't want to go home yet. Okay. Funny. Sure. Whatever, cute. And this woman goes, have you got home? Oh, what is that? She turned on you. Have I got a home? I, I mean, you... she was being funny. Oh, but I'm like, have I got a home? I got a beautiful home. What am I homeless? I'm like, 
You want to you want to see my bank account? I'm doing quite well. Yeah, have and you got a home? I'm not an asshole. I'm not smoking cigarettes and yelling cunt. I'm being clever and cute over here. I'm at a tennis tournament for God's sakes. I don't know if she was being cutesy. That sounds pretty cutting. I think the old bag was uh, sticking it to you. Yeah, I feel like she was sticking it. Yeah, a little piss and vinegar in this uh, nana. What the fuck is that? Have you got a home? I think you had one too many uh, riffs, and she she was like, "All right, that's you're off. You're cut off." But I think she thought I was going to be like, oh, no, I got a home. And I go, I go like this. Yeah. Which I thought was pretty That funny. was pretty good. <laughs> Boy, that's, that's a punch right to the kisser. I go, yeah, I live in New York, you fucking douche. I buy I, a very expensive rent. Yes. Fuck you. Yeah, you Brit. What are you doing here? You're on our turf. By the way, you're in section 480. You're not exactly killing it. I mean, come on. Yeah, good point. And you're going to die soon. So how about you cheer up there, cocoon? I, I didn't care for that. Have you got a home? Not a fan. Do I seem homeless? I'm at a tennis tournament. Right, exactly. And maybe offensive to the hobos out there. Yeah, exactly. So fuck her. But anyways, it was a great time. I, I got a little bathroom tale. You know, All right. The bathrooms. Hit me, fatty. I thought this was fun. So I had a layover in Salt Lake City, and I had to take a huge shit. What is it about waking up early that throws your gastral system off? I have the same thing, and... I don't know how about your your uh, waterworks in here and all that, but for some reason, if I'm feeling off and I shit, I feel better. I, I think my body brings all the toxins and mm-hmm. all the dog shit together, and I get it out, and I feel better. Yeah, that's what I have, but it's so weird when you wake up three hours earlier, you're just nothing but farts. Yeah. And it really is. I'm like, are we just farting all night? Just Maybe it seeps through your dick hole, and just you don't even, you don't even make the, the flapping noise. It just... Maybe that's what they thought ghosts were in the uh, in the old days. <laughs> Could be. Well, these are stinky ghosts, so I got to shit. So I run off the plane and run into the bathroom. Now, this is going to be hard to visualize, but I I come in and I don't like. Uh, I, I had to go to the. I was going to say I don't like urinals, but I had to shit, so you can't shit in a urinal. Yeah, no, not, not, not in public. So I come in and there's a bunch of people. It's busy at the air. That's a huge airport, Salt Lake City. Oh, yeah. Hub. So a big Delta hub. So I walk in and then there's three stalls. Very nice airport. Nice bathroom. And I come in and the first stall door is open a jar. Mm. It's a jar open and it's got the green. It's got the green red system. Oh, lock, unlock. Yes, so it's unlocked and open a jar of pickles. Yes, so, jarhead. Then there's just a guy standing outside of it. He looks like he's waiting, but the door's open. Mm. So I walk right by him, and as I walk in, I bump into a guy who's leaving. And I go, oh, shit, sorry. I didn't know anyone was in there. He's, like, just finishing up and okay. turning. And I was like, oh, I didn't know anyone was in there because the door's open. I get mad at him, like, you got to lock the door. What right, the fuck? I hate right. these people that don't lock the door. Yeah. So I go in. He closes the door, and I just hear, fuck, what the fuck? And then I hear him say to this other guy, he goes, I thought you were waiting here. He's like, I was waiting. He's like, I got a shit so bad. I've been waiting this whole fucking time. Huh. So this guy outside was waiting for his buddy to finish pissing so he could shit. What? But the buddy didn't lock the door, so I cut the guy. Oh. You see what I'm saying here? Are you getting this vision? Why was he outside? Well, one guy's in the stall pissing. Yes. And the other guy is standing right outside the door waiting for the stall. And you cut him. I cut him, but only because the door was unlocked. A jar. So I just thought he was standing there like a fucking weirdo in the bathroom. Uh-huh. Well, I didn't, didn't realize. He, why didn't he go, hey, Dickless, I'm about to shit in there. I think because I came in at such a strong angle. I just went, I just whoosh, zipped in. I see. You zipped. And he was coming out. The guy was coming out being like, whoa, whoa, what the fuck is this? So I just blatantly cut him, but now I know this guy's waiting to shit, and he was going to shit his pants, but now I'm in there. Oh, no. So now I can't shit because I'm thinking about this guy. Wow. But what now you know you cut him. Now I know I cut him, but I got to shit, so I don't give a fuck about him. Sure. Your ass is on the, on the, on the warmth. It's on the seat. Exactly. And it's his buddy's fault that I cut him because his buddy's a chooch who didn't fucking lock the door. Interesting. Pop Cause, and lock. Because if he had locked the door, I would have went, ah, oh, shit, someone's in there. And then this guy would have went, oh, and I'm next. Right. Went, oh, Jesus. Oh, boy. Do you see what I mean? I do. This is a little Kirby a situation here. But, but then I had to shit while listening to a guy talk about how he had to shit. And I can see, like, under his oh, feet, I'm, like, doing the little, I got a shit dance. And shitting is already vulnerable. And now when somebody's angry and you got to rush a shit... Get out of here. Russia shit. Russia Shana. I mean, I had to shit as fast as I could, and I wiped a hundred times, and I had the magic marker in my ass. I got blood uh, all over me. I hate the marker. And then I come out, and he's still there. He's like, whew. And I'm like, uh, sorry, 
bro. Yeah. And so now he's got a shit on top of my shit. I didn't flush the toilet, the whole thing. Not to mention all the awkward, like, this guy, he, no one wants to shit after anybody. But no. when you got a shit, you got a shit. Oh, he's third in the batting order. Ooh. At least. At least. Not to mention the Mormons in that town and uh, what, is, what is the polygamy? Yeah. Well, so anyways, I cut a guy in line, took a big shit. He had to shit, and that was wacky. But uh, All's well that shit's well. Yeah, I guess so. And I, I, got, I, got, I mean, I got a bunch of other Please. stuff if you want to hear some. Yeah, I'd love to lay it on me. Uh, oh, yeah, British lady, do you have a home? Okay, uh, that one I did. Okay, well, this one. Boy, I had a lot of shitting stories, so I'll skip the shit story. But then how about this? You're going to hate this woman and oh, her daughter. I can't wait. We've got a coos coming. Isn't it fun to just hate people? Oh, yeah. That's why I got in the KKK. Really enjoyable. Yeah. What about a gay, gay, gay? You know, it's like a hate group of all gays. I like it. I like it. The gay, gay, gay. Gay, gay, gay. They they wear uh, they, they can wear sheets, but they'll be like pink. <laughs> pink sheets. Pink sheets. Isn't that something? Pink sheet. A pink sheet. That's when you get fired, right? Oh, a pink slip. A pink slip. Yes. That was a slip. sheet. Why do I think sheet? What sheet? Uh, there's a rap sheet. <laughs> there's a... I never cared for that music. The sheet. Sheet music. The sheet music. Rap That's what sheet the gay, music. The gay, gay, gay listen to sheet music. Is that something? Rap yeah. sheet music. Okay. Because it's got to be sheet music for rap songs. Hey. All right. There's also sheets, the uh, gas station. All right. Yeah. Come and go. Mmm. Wawa. Fun. Yeah. Fettle. Funny, funny name. Stuckies is the one down south. Oh, yeah. I know Stuckies. Stucky oh, and Murray. Yeah. Remember them? Oh, yeah. I haven't Stucky heard that Murray. name in 28 yeah. years. <laughs> Blast from the past. <laughs> Give that a Goog. I don't know. One of them died, I assume, in a fire. Were they funny? I don't really remember them. Ah, I just remember seeing them around. Music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all you need to remember. But Henry's great. Who? Henry Phillips. Oh, yeah, he's funny. And uh, Stephen Lynch. Whatever happened to that kook? I don't know about Stephen he Lynch. He was huge. Yeah, he was big. It I don't know like, if saw any of it. Louis Black, Hedberg, Lynch, oh, David right. Tell. They were uh, Geraldo. They were all in cahoots. Dane Cook. That's right. <laughs> that was a different cahoots. breed, different generation. So listen to these women that I hate. So Let's now get it's back to the broad. Day two of the tournament. This time it's night. We go to a night session, which is just so fun. You have the morning session. You're there all day. It's like a festival, that that, that uh I mean, no, but isn't it enough tennis? We've seen enough's enough. That's tennis all day. I love tennis. I mean, I just love it. And I finally I taught Sarah how to how its scoring works, which was fun. So she got into it a little bit. And okay. I brought my camera, so I was taking some like real Ooh. photos and shit. I mean, I could just sit there all day and all night. I just love it. So I'm there. The night two, we cut day two, but we're at the night session, which is beautiful because the sun is setting over the mountains. Mm. It's spectacular. I love the desert. Palm it, Springs. Is it boiling hot out there? No, it was gorgeous. It's Southern California in the fall. It's like 75 uh, yeah, and sunny. Point, it was point. hot, actually, but not horrible. It was all like right. you know, 85, dry heat, whatever the fuck that means. But when the sun goes down, it's like 58, 60. That's lunch. Gambling, hiking. We hiked all day. Spectacular. Woke up early. I threw water in her face. Take her out. Go hiking. Here, here. And it's such a great activity to hike all day, then go to tennis. Because ten- you're just sitting there quiet. It's yeah. not crowded. It's a nice way to unwind. So there's, uh, it's, again, it's pretty quiet. We're watching the match. And there's a, a fat woman and her fat daughter, two rows in front of us. Okay. And I'm talking, it's, it's sparse. So there's like two people on that end of the aisle, two rows behind us. There's a few people couple of fat ringers. Yeah. So we're sitting behind the fat mother-daughter combo. Mm. Then a guy comes. He's solo, and he's drunk, but a nice guy just by okay. himself. A guy, I relate to this guy. Sure. He's a drunk. He's watching tennis by himself. I, can, I see myself in this guy. What a weird tennis, Palm Spring, drunk alone. That's a weird mix. Palm Spring is a kind of a high affluent, highfalutin area. It is. Very gay area. Very gay. Well, the gays like nice areas. Sure. And Blue tennis. my asshole. Uh, so, so it, he's a guy, he comes in and he's got, he's by himself, he's drinking some kind of chocolate drink with a rim and he's, chocolate drink with a rim? What kind of drunk is this? <laughs> he's got a, like a powdered rim or something, a cocoa rim. Is he one of these gays? I don't know, I don't think he was gay, he seems straight, he's gruff, older, had like an overcoat maybe or something. All right, the, the gays don't mind a rim. So he's got a brown rim, I don't think he's gay. <laughs> All right. He's sipping on a brown rim drink. Maybe he's gay. I don't know. I can't tell what's what. Rim or rum? Well, it's probably rum, but a rim. Oh, yeah, rim rum. Like a, like a margarita, but brown. Ah, uh, <laughs> that sounds like 
Swamp water. I don't know what that means. It's probably some tennis cocktail. It's probably ah, a mud Mudville nine or it's whatever. A Serena. Yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a Williams sister. There you go. Liquid death. I don't know. It had powder shit on it. Can I get to the story? Sorry, of powder shit. So he drinks the the Nestle Quick <laughs> thing, puts that down, then he oh, leaves. Geez. And I'm just, I like this guy. The fat woman and her fat daughter are there. They're just whatever. I don't care about that. Sure, them. sure. They're having a nice time. They're taking selfies that I'm in, which is always weird when you, you do the look when they're doing the selfie. Oh, yeah, the photo bomb. Then the guy comes back, and he's got a little tray. He's got a beer now. He switched mm. from liquor to beer in the clear, whatever. He's yeah. got a big old beer and a hot dog with the works. Oh, yeah, love it. Relish, seaweed, salmon, mustard, ketchup, cum, the whole thing. I think <laughs> he was straight. <laughs> so he comes in, and he's a little stumbling because he's drunk, but he's come loving the tennis. I, he's got a tennis booklet, and I see see he's oh, looking yeah. at the thing and he walks a little past his seat and he's, he takes a little bit of a, a dip and a turn and he spills some beer i'm talking just a lip Boop. just a little <whistles> layer meniscus it spills on the floor and the woman goes oh what <laughs> ah what and the daughter ah. the daughter goes oh my god and she's like oh. 14 she goes, oh, my God. He goes, oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And he, he falls down into his seat. He's got a hot dog and a beer. And he goes, I'm so sorry. Oh, sorry. Jesus, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. And she goes, what the? And they're both throwing oh, their hands up. Hands up. Twats. Don't shoot. Get they're out of here. both going like this. And then they get up. Oh, and she, the, the daughter keeps looking at the back, like, doing this. Oh, my God. And I'm jizz on you, lady. I'm sitting there. You're at a sporting event. you got to get a little beer. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a sporting it's event. He's an old fun. man. He's a sad, drunk old man. And you you got to give him the, hey, no sweat. Yes. You know how many beers I've had dropped on me? People of have course. pissed in my mouth, <laughs> come in my ass for fun. Sorry like, about that. It's like... What are you talking about? And she, the daughter keeps looking at the back. Oh, my God. I'm appalled. And I'm looking at the shirt. There's not even anything on the shirt. Yeah. And she audibly goes, asshole. Wow. Then they get up. They get up and they move down, which doesn't even make sense. Because I'm sense? like, what's he going to keep dumping beer on I you? I know, you crazy coos. Get out of here. He spilled. You're at a professional live sporting event, you dumb shithead. I would have gone up and blown the guy just out of guilt. I feel horrible for this guy. So she gets up and she moves down here now they're directly in front of me and this hand waving goes on for eight minutes oh i my swear to god Lord. the check in the back looking at the shirt and the daughter i'm like you're raising a fucking douchebag yes this is a tina teach your kids some like forgive hey it happens no sweat right hell of a match huh i mean what are you gonna you're gonna be a little wet we're in the desert it will dry and it was barely on her we hated her and then i audibly said you're the asshole yeah, which was fun i gave her the old you. you're the asshole because it's like Jerry at the opera. I feel tough in a tennis yeah, match. Yeah, you got that right. I'll fuck that lady up. Yeah, you got home. What? Huh? What'd you say? That was a callback to the British goes. Oh, if you got home. Oh, yeah. The accent was too good. I didn't understand. No, I can't do the accent. Let me see. There might be one wow. other thing. Wow. You see, everything sitting. tends to be the opposite. Bill Cosby's preaching all this good family living, clean up your act, put your fucking pants up. Then he's killing people or raping people, whatever he's doing. Everything is the opposite. She called this guy an asshole. She's an asshole. I'm like, you're the very definition of an asshole. Exactly. A, a person made an honest mistake trying to get to their seat, hands full, at a sporting event. I know. And, and it's a drip. It wasn't a full beer. I've had a full 16-ounce beer dumped on me at a Pearl Jam show. I was unhappy. I'm bummed because the guy was drunk. And you go, ah, fuck. But what am I going to do? Fight yeah, him? I know. Exactly. You go, ah, shit. Now my pant legs. But I mean, this was like minuscule, if anything, audibly calls him an asshole, makes him feel bad, shames him, moves seats. Yeah. I mean, the hands in the air. Uh. What a douchebag. And they kept talking, but they were like whispering and going, like, uh. looking back at him. And I'm like, he's got nobody. He's a sad old guy. Just let him watch some tennis. Couple of Karens right here. And then the, the fat one's going to die alone, let's be honest. And the mom's probably a single lady. She can't get a man with that kind of attitude. Come on. Ah, just forgive. Forgive and forget. But who am I? I'm not forgiving or forgetting. So who don't uh, I know? Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're acting like the two fat broads to the uh, to the, the beer guy. But they deserve. It. I mean, you can't be that mean to a guy. That, that's too... 
it's overdone. It's unnecessary. You just want to be like, I could help you. I need, you need help. You need Alan. You need, you need help. therapy. You need some meditation, some forgiveness, the kindness. And is this the this is the biggest problem in your life? Your life is so great that you have one drop of beer spilled on you, and you use it to emote all this horse shit that's going on. You're hurting. You got real problems. Something internal is going on, and you're taking it out on old. Budweiser face. And he was a nice guy, and he was fun. He was like, come on, let's go. He was cheering him on, not obnoxiously, just nice, clapping. And this was fascinating, because we was, he was one row up. We could see him. He's just tweeting nonstop at people. Like He's one of these guys, like, mm. isn't it weird to think of, like, a 60-year-old guy yeah. using Twitter? Yeah, and it was all that, because I was, like, leaning in to see. He's, like, tweeting at tennis people, being like, hey, she looks good in this one. Wow. And you're like, isn't it weird that there's some people that just use Twitter to be like, Hell of a match. What'd you think, bud? Yeah, yeah. that's true. Really that interesting. Did, isn't it weird that we're sitting here? I wasn't even at this fucking match, and this is consuming me. That consumed you. Yes, yeah, consumed. This guy probably thought about it for two seconds. He's the one who got yelled at. He probably put it out of his ass. He didn't care. He went, oh, well, whatever. What's up with them? But oh, also, that's healthy, too. To be fair, I mean, I got a show. I got to entertain. Ah, okay, Sometimes okay. you get that, by the way. People will write down, you got to get over it, you piece of shit. I'm like, well, we're doing a program here. I can't. Yeah, we need content and fun. I, I can't just meditate over here. Right, right. Talk about something. It'd be not a great show. So I was meditating and uh, did my uh, mantra. But that being said, it did linger. It was like an hour later. I'm just staring. Every, every point, I would just stare and be like, you fucking yeah. horrible people. Now, does, do other people do that? Do other people? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. I didn't know. If, I think other people just go, oh, that's crazy. Oh, look at the swing on that cunt. Maybe some people, but I think most people are walking around. But they're like fuming about their lives or something. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. Well, that, that bums me out. I, I, I don't know. That shit drives me crazy. So, all right. You ready for this? Yes. All right. I'll... I'll uh, Try to pull this one out of my ass. And... Hey. It's all that, snappers. That delivered. That delivered. Ooh. Speaking of pulling out of the ass. So uh, I go to Rochester. Oh. Mark Ippolito, Comedy at the Carlson. Rochester, real blue collar. You know, Bausch and Loam, Kodak. You know, it was Ooh. one of these boom towns that just fell to shit when, uh, when the Kodak went digital. Last time I was there was with you. You and Chris Allen came up and visited the week oh, before yeah. my wedding. Yeah, wow. Yeah, Damn, August twenty seventeen. Crazy. Just they didn't do well. Twenty seventeen. Yeah, it was four years ago. Holy moly! Yeah, we're old. I've known him that long, huh? Mm-hmm. So, uh, doing the show, great show. You know when a club really cares, they give a shit. He picks you up from the airport. He's got a blazer on. He's like, "How are you, buddy? We can't wait to have you. We got you in this room. They check in with you. Like they need you to do that and all that." But it's nice. I love that. Comedy at the Carlisle, Carlson. Well, I was. Care. You said care. And I, uh, Carol, I Carlson. Okay. I didn't go uh, know what the Lyle was. Yeah. I was thinking it was Carlisle. Lyle, love it. But uh, I fucking ruined the whole show. Either way, we get to the place. The show's great. He's one of these guys that, like, he's tearing tickets. He's moving tables. He's helping you. He comes in the green room. What do you need? He's got the rider there. Everything's great. Quentin tearing tickets? There we go. Uh, We're back. Yeah. And uh, just a great show. Now, this is still like a, it's kind of a rough and tumble town, that Rochester. You know, these are, oh, yeah. they got some townies up there. Scary. So both, all the shows are great, but the two late shows were mm. pretty Wild West. Oh, boy. I mean, it is just zinging and zanging. That guy's getting thrown out. That guy heckled. I shoot him down. He gets thrown out. There's a fist fight. There's a chicken wing. You know, <laughs> I mean, it was uh, rootin' tootin' over there. And, uh... By the second show Saturday night, I just I just had it. I was just like, all right, I I, I got to do my act. This is this is not how comedy is, right? And the shows are great. The club's great. They were super nice. I don't want to shit on the club, but great club. At one point, I did like, a, all right, let's just drop the material and be, and do a Q and A. Oh boy, that's where we're at here. I mean, I'm I've gone full. Put the chalk down. I got an airplane, a paper airplane. Shooting in my head, you know. I'm the teacher. I'm going. All right, what do you kids want to talk about? You want to do some rap? You want to fight? What do you want? You know. So I'm the substitute teacher. I'm pissed. My hair's frazzled, and we just start going. What's up with it? One guy. Where's Joe? You know that. That's a fun one. 
Uh, he's on another gig. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're not actually co- connected. You know, whatever. Everyone's like, come here with Mark. I'm like, what do you want to do? Feature for Mark? What's yeah, going on here? Exactly. I have but a life. They don't know what to yell. One guy's like, abortion, squid game. You know, it's all this shit. <laughs> and one guy, one lady goes, bring back the second guy, which is always hurtful. Ooh, who was the second guy? That was Chris Allen. Oh, yeah. He's the feature. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so that's I did, a, I did, that's I did, a tough heckle. I had to do a whole thing. Oh, you got a black fetish. You know, I've just I'm tried not to be hurt because that stings, but. What are you going to do? And uh, now this is the clinker. One guy goes, this guy, you know the guy in the front row, he's barely listening. When he does listen, he goes, ah, woo, hell yeah. He's falling over. He's clapping at the wrong time. Oh, Get him, Mark. Get him. A lot of that shit. I think he was at the Cornhole fundraiser. <laughs> yeah, I think he's a fat ringer, and he hated these zingers. But either way, his, his fat daughter's texting. He's cheered me on for no reason, and his other friend is sleeping. So I already hate the table immediately. At one, at one point, the woman started filming me, and I had to shit shit in her mess. But uh, so he, you know, I'm, I'm zinging and zagging. Eventually, the guy goes, Front row. Hand raise up. his hand. I'm like, you've been yelling at me all night. Now you raise your hand. Now you think you're a fucking uh, the the class pet over here. And I go, what is it? What is it, Dickless? What's the what's the what's the big hubbub? Class pet. And he goes, uh, can I get emotional? And the whole place oh. goes, oh, no. God, here we go. And I no. go, sir, don't get emotional. Just ask a question or don't. We've already had, you know, we we've been through it. And he goes, he just stands up, and he goes, Mark. I got to tell you. And he just starts walking towards the oh, stage. And I go, I hate buddy, this guy. sit your fat ass down. Don't come up here. This is a sacred stage. You can't, don't even put a foot on there. Pops up on stage. And I, I'm not scared. I have no stage fear. Because, like, whatever happens, it'll get broken up or I'll hit him with the mic stand or whatever. But he gets, he pops up on stage. And I'm like, I'm up, I'm against the wall like this, you know, doing this bullshit like a cool guy. And he's just walking towards me. And I go, well, let's see what happens here. But I knew a camera was rolling, which ah, is always nice. That's nice. So I had a camera on me. So he's walking towards me, and he's, you know, he's a little worse for wear, mm-hmm. whatever that means. And uh, woo, out of the shadows, the bouncer tackles oh, his ass. Oh, love it! Tackles his ass. Then another guy jumps in. It was like a like a fumble when the ball's all over the place. Sure, a fumble. Yes, and uh, they pick him up and they bring his Raiders hat and his sweatpants off to the side and they just... I mean, they Rodney kinged him up <laughs> and uh, I go, well, how do you like that? Folks? That's why you gotta come see live comedy. Thanks for coming out. I'm Mark Norman. And we got off stage. Oh, and then, great. Glad. So did he get emotional or? Well, he got emotional in the in the hospital, I assume, with the with the breathing tube and the make a wish. But uh, yeah, it was a, it was a wild, wild evening. Oh wow! I mean, that is horrifying. I mean, yeah, that town. I had a couple of run-ins with uh, some street folk up there. Oh yeah, as I always do. I got a <laughs> bad face. Well, you're a sitting twat over there. Every <laughs> <laughs> sitting cuck. I gotta grow some mutton chops and Something. and, and, and uh, I don't know. A tattoo, maybe yeah, something. Lost a good tat on the neck, or maybe a forehead uh, bullseye. I don't know what you need. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I can't remember what happened. But I remember we probably talked about it in the podcast four years ago. But probably I remember having a couple situations up there. It's a it's a dicey town, but a nice club. I'd like to be back. It's been about nine years. Yeah, great club. They they want to have you. They tell Joe, tell Joe. You know, you know, we have to manage each other. We're we're, we're each other's agent. Like me going, you got to do that club. Is going to make you go. I'll be there. I know. You got to go through an agent. You got to find a date. You got to do a contract. But yeah, I know. I haven't emailed the comedy club and been like, "Can I come there?" Since 1998, <laughs> right? Well, it was email was new, right? What are you, a scientist? What the but, hell's an email? <laughs> yeah, but uh, so that was that. We sold some shirts. We took some photos. I had the thing where the kid heckled me for an hour, got thrown out, bought a shirt. Isn't that fun? Oh wow, that's a that's a. Th- no other art form has that. Nobody's going up to Pearl Jam, throwing a burrito at his face, and then Eddie Vedder's behind a table, you know, going, "Hey, uh, cash your card." Right. So good yeah. time. What what more, what more of a hands on art form is there besides you know porn? It's really something, and uh, people really have access to you. It's awkward, and uh, it's gonna be awkward tonight. We're going to a concert. Which I, have you ever been to a concert? It feels weird. I mean, what no, are we gonna do? You know go. what to do? I don't know what to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide in the back. Well, you gotta change your shoes first and foremost. Oh yeah. Well, it's a it's a 
Brooklyn. It's in Brooklyn. I can so wear heels, I feel like. You'll fit in. <laughs> but I'm excited. But that's what happens now. A lot of these general admission shows, you get Tuesdays, they come up, and then they kind of stand next to you. Right, right. And you're like, you know, playing air guitar, and they're like, oh, you're going air guitar. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And you go, ah, oh, yeah, I like to air guitar. Then they blog about it. I saw Joe. He did air guitar. Yeah, it's a little interesting. He was off so key. Yeah. Pretty dicey. All right, well, maybe we can find a nook, a corner, a shadow to hide in. Yeah, that might be a bit nice. All right, all right. Fake well, mustaches. Where are you going to be? We, we should plug Soul Joel. Oh, Soul Joel, this next Tuesday, eight days from now, or seven days from now, I should say, seven days from now, Soul Joel's. It will sell out, so get your tickets, book your tickets. I think it's already like three quarters sold. It's yeah. the last time under the tent. Is that right? Yes. And we got huge guests, Sean Patton and Shane Gillis. Big whales. Yeah, big fat guest. It's going to be something. And then uh, November is a huge month. Obviously, Skankfest. We're doing a live Tuesdays. What day are we Thursday. doing? Thursday. Oh, Thursday. Yeah. Oh, that's better. It's locked in. Great. It's locked, Jerry. Pop uh, and locked. Skankfest. That's already sold out. You can't come to that unless you already have tickets. November 11th to the 13th, Portland Helium. November 18th to the 20th, Zany Chicago. November 25th and 26th, or maybe it's 26th, 27th, I think. Yeah, 2627 Providence Comedy Connection. That's like a hometown gig. And then December 7th, you guys already sold out the first show. That's my special taping. So you got to come to the 10 p.m. show at uh, the Village Underground. That's on sale at thecomedycellar.com. You can make a reservation. You make a reservation. And, uh, <laughs> What's that from again? That's a tell. Oh, right, right, right. Jay as in jihadist. One way. Oh, no, one way. Inside mm-hmm. joke. And then please subscribe to my YouTube. The special is probably going to be on my YouTube. I need some subscribers over there. So go over to Joe List. There's a bunch of old fun shit. Joe and Ron on's on there. Subscribe for the love of fucking Pete. Uh, that's it. You got that right. And yeah, support Joe. Go subscribe because uh, all the hot shit's going to YouTube. I mean, Gillis is out there now, and uh, Stavros has got one cooking. I think Ron on. So, Ron on's taping, yeah. Yeah, all kinds of killers going to the tubes. We also have one on there already each. And uh, I'm at Dr. Grin's in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Eesh. Portland Helium, Laugh Boston. Brea, California at the Improv, Vancouver, British Columbia at the House of Comedy, New Orleans at the Howlin' Wolf, Hometown Hero, Royal Oak, Michigan, back in the Mish, Atlanta, Buckhead Theater, Milwaukee Improv, all kinds of fun dates. By the way, I do a, a show every Wednesday in Manhattan at a New York Comedy Club Hot and a soup. show every Tuesday in the Comedy Cellar, Fat Black Pussycat on Tuesdays at 1030, just if you live in the city. Come on out, check us out, get on the Patreon. We got our new hot gay sets up, thanks to Chuck D on the ones and eights. And uh, yeah, say hello, queef it up, tell a friend, praise Allah. Join the same, cut it. No